Well, this out of the way. Welcome back to another video here on Unplugged TV, Sunny Hot Australia. You just saw it. So good to see your happy faces again, guys. Yeah, everyone is here. Excellent. Okay, this is part two of the video where I show you how to charge from home. So if you haven't seen part one, I link the video again down below in the description box. Well, and as you have learned from part one of this video, how easy it is to charge your car at home now. In this video today, we want to have a look how fast you actually can charge at home, how fast you need to charge at home. So, and of course, as we have learned, we just plugged in the car, plugged into a power point, made sure there's power. <laughs> I've forgotten the whiteboard. All right, so here I have prepared our whiteboard. Okay, what we want to determine is which setting brings you how many kilometers per hour or how many miles per hour. So as you have seen, we have plugged in the car now with the EVSE, which came with it. So we are not using any charging station or something. We're using the charging equipment supplied with the car. And potentially this is all you need. You don't need to buy another station or another another fancy home charger. Again, this is this is very similar to your phone. Even for your phone, you can buy these ultra rapid charging systems that they charge your phone faster. I mean, if, if you need that, what, what are you doing with your phone that it doesn't last a whole day? Anyway, because because we are sitting in a Tesla now, this might be a little bit different to your car. So it may not be 100% accurate what we find out now in regards to what kind of vehicle you have, but it gives you a good indication, a good idea how fast the car will charge on certain settings. Okay, let's get started then. Okay, I'm just setting the limit a bit higher. So it actually starts charging. I can maximum charge is 12 amps. This is this is the maximum the EVSE can deliver to a Tesla when plugged into a normal power point. That's exactly what we just did here. There's the power point, there's the EVSE, there's the cable, and it plugs into the back of the car. Okay, so the first charging setting, this is the minimum I can charge in a Tesla. Five amps. Why would you charge that slow? Well, if you have a very old installation at home, if you charge at a friend's house, at a holiday home, you don't know the electrical installation, you don't know how good the contacts are, you don't want to start a fire, right? You don't, you just don't want to start a fire when you charge your car. So charge slow as possible if you're not at home. If you don't know what installation is there, charge slow if you have time. So five amps gives us six kilometers, six kilometers per hour. Well, this is um so th this will be 3.7 miles per hour this is the slowest charge you can actually get um what i will do is all right let's assume you can charge your car for 12 hours a day so say you come home at 6 p.m in the evening you plug in your car and you drive off to work again at 6 p.m at 6 a.m of course at 6 a.m in the morning so you've got 12 hours of charging time at home I think, I think this is realistic. Yeah. Right. Let's pretend 12 hours. Where is dieser verdammte Taschenrechner jetzt hin here? Okay, so the number in brackets is now uh, 12 hour charging on this setting. So 12 times 6 is uh, 72 kilometers overnight or 44 miles. Roughly it's 44.4, but let's say 44 miles. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's try the next one. 6 amp. Ah, see, we are getting eight kilometers per hour now. This is like eight, um, eight, uh, 88. Um, so eight kilometers per hour is roughly five miles per hour, which is then um, uh, 60. So on six amp settings, you can charge 96 kilometers overnight or 60 miles overnight. Okay, let's let me fill this out and we go to um, up to um, 12 amps now, right? 12 amps is the maximum in the Tesla here. Okay, and here's the result. We are on 12 amps, which is the maximum we can charge with the mobile charger coming with the car. And this is the result. So from 5 amp down to 12 amp, and we can see we can charge 18 kilometers per hour, which is 216 kilometers overnight just with a mobile charger, which is 132 miles overnight. 
I think this is pretty impressive. 216 kilometers. I don't know. Miles is not my thing, you know. I don't know. I Well, 216 kilometers overnight in 12 hours charging with the charger coming with the car. This is, well, this is half my battery. So I can replenish the car's battery overnight by 50% if I have to. All right, so as you have seen, um, I've left some space down here. I want to test the Tesla power wall connector. I want to test the Tesla wall connector as well, of course, because this charge is so much faster than the mobile connector. Let's unlock the charge port. Well, um, yeah, as you have seen, I have not installed my wall connector yet. I think you know exactly what's coming now. I know where one is. Let's go there. Right, guys not yet you think that I was driving so long I had another customer appointment before you can see this is the same charging station as they give me for free with the car so pretty good right we take we don't take the 50 kilowatt charger today we take the destination charger this is exactly the same charger as I have at home and I think it's not working I think it's not turned on. I think it's not turned on, hey? Now this is just for the power point, right? Oh, it's not working. Well, we can try the reset button, but I don't think it works. Total fail. Oh guys, I got it working. <laughs> nice one, got it working. Don't know why it didn't work before. All right, let's do this, huh? I should see the other side, actually. I can't uh, put the... Okay, so we are now connected to a three-phase power. You can not see that. Day. Ooh, it gets bright. Okay, but now you can see the little three there. See in front of the five? That means three-phase. So they have connected this destination charger to three-phase power. We're getting 415 volt now. I've turned down the current to 5 amps again. I just want to show you what 5 amps does. Usually you don't do this on, on three-phase, you know. But, well, but, come on, let me pin here. I tell you a bit more about how to connect the Tesla wall charger at home. But this one here is correctly connected to three phase. You don't have to do this, but this is the maximum speed you can get. So, and we turn off air conditioning for the moment because this takes away some um, energy as well. And we ramp this one up to say 10 amps three phase. And you can already see we're getting 50 kilometers per hour. 50 kilometers per hour right so if you can hook up your tesla wall connector or your other charging station whatever you have to 10 amp three phase you will get 50 kilometers per hour which is like 600 kilometers overnight in 12 hours 30 31 miles or 372 miles overnight that is insane right this is more capacity than the battery actually has. So I could fully recharge this car overnight on 10 amp three phase with this wall connector. And remember the, the, the maximum we could get with the mobile charging equipment was 216. So roughly half the battery overnight. And this one 
well. But now it comes better if you push this up to 16 amp, which is the maximum. You can see the kilometers going up. Look at this shit. 81 kilometer per hour. 81 kilometer. This is 81 times. And this results in 972 kilometers overnight, which you can potentially recharge. Well, this is this is almost twice as much as the battery can take. Well, this is almost this is almost three times. This is almost three times what the battery actually can take. 50 miles per hour or 600 miles overnight you could recharge with the Tesla wall connector. And you get this for free. Remember, this comes with a car for free. You just need to get your electrician to install it at your home, connect it to a 16 amp three phase if you have, and then you're good. You're good. Well, I know some people have only eight amp three phase at home, and this will result in um, 40 kilometers. Well, half the amps is half the kilometers, right? So 40 kilometers an hour, which is still insane. This is like for 480 kilometers overnight. And if you have only six amp and three phase at home, you still get 30 kilometers per hour, which is uh, 360 kilometers overnight. So, I mean, that's a full battery overnight for this car from zero to 100, you know? So let's head back home now. And, and tomorrow I will talk about what options you have to connect a charging station or a Tesla wall connector at your home. And I didn't want to do the same trick again as yesterday, so back to the topic. So we now have covered basically all the charging speeds you can achieve at home with the mobile connector or with the wall connector from Tesla. Any other charging station you can buy from other manufacturers will do similar things. This is not just valid for Tesla but other manufacturers as well. So what should you do now? Well this all depends on two factors. What kind of power source have you got available? What kind of electricity? What kind of electric connection have you got at home you can utilize for charging your car? And secondly, how much do you drive? How many kilometers do you need per night? Yeah, as you can see I haven't bothered installing the wall connector yet. Even it gives you much faster charging, I'm still using the mobile connector just plugged into a power point. Well, and if you have a look at the table again here, the blue numbers are from the mobile connector and the green ones are from the wall connector coming with the car. And because I'm driving only about 30 kilometers a day, I can easily charge on the slowest setting and get 72 kilometers overnight. So twice as much as I actually need. So why should I bother installing a wall connector, a charging station, just, just to enable me to get 600 kilometers overnight? Well, having a look at my old meter box here, I've got three phase power here, which I could utilize. This is a 20 amp circuit, so perfectly. I could, I could easily utilize this circuit and connect the wall connector to it. This, um, yeah, there was, there was the old bore pump connected to this circuit, which I don't use anymore. Yeah, so if I would connect the station to this three-phase circuit, so if I would connect this charging stations to my uh, three-phase circuit, I could charge 600 or 972 kilometers overnight. But I need only 30. I need 30 kilometers. Sometimes I need 50 or 60 kilometers, but this is still totally in range of the mobile connector. So I have really hesitated to connect this um, wall connector so far. <laughs> it's still sitting in my garage for the last six, seven months since I got the car and I haven't bothered installing it. The, the mobile connector is um, super totally fine for me, for my needs. And I never had an issue. As you may know from other videos, I keep my battery on 60% state of charge all the time. Unless we go for a longer trip or so, I charge a bit higher. But even then, I can easily recharge my battery on 12 amp with a mobile connector 
to um, for another 216 kilometers overnight so I can basically fully charge the battery overnight with the mobile connector. I don't have any need at all to go faster. Of course if you are if you are driving a lot holy shit look at this eh this car is a killer. Of course if you are driving a lot or more importantly if you have a special tariff which gives you a reduced rate it potentially would make sense to install the wall connector or a charging stations to charge the car faster. Yeah, some people have special tariffs from 12 to 5 o'clock in the morning. They get a super low tariff from their energy provider. And in this case, it would make sense to install a charging stations to benefit from this low tariff. Because then exactly you have this time constraint. You need to charge the car as fast as possible in this short amount of time. This may not be possible with the mobile charger anymore. So probably you want to start with a mobile connector first when you get your car new, plug it into a power point and charge your car and see how far you come with a mobile connector. And if the charging speed is not sufficient for your needs, yeah, go and talk to your electrician, get a quote to install, to install a charging station. And sometimes it's just a lot cheaper to get a new power point installed in your garage or carport and plug in the mobile connector than having the electrician installing the full size charging stations wall connector and running a thick cable from your location through wherever to your meter box which which my one is just on the other side of the garage so i would have about 20 25 meters of cable necessary to connect my wall connector my charging station to this meter box but again it's much cheaper to just get a new power point installed and plug in the mobile connector if this suits your needs. Yeah, and if you are living in a department complex, you don't have any power available in your car park downstairs. Well, I made a, made a video about this as well. It's linked down below. And also the question, can you charge your car with an extension cable? I also made a video that's quite a while back with the Outlander PHEV still. I had about five or four extension cables plugged into each other, measured temperatures, voltage drops and electrical losses. Yeah, this, this test video is linked down below as well. Well, I think we've covered everything now in regards to charging at home so far. So if you have any further questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I think you've got a quite good understanding now how to charge your car at home and with what speed. What speed can you expect using a mobile charger and a charging station? All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. This is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. You stay charged, you stay safe. And we will all see us again in the next video very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See you then. Bye-bye.